foundations are destroyed. Say destroyed. Say destroyed. It says, what shall the righteous do? It means that whatever he has spoken about affects the righteous. Who is righteous? Somebody who is born again. Now, one of the biggest lies that the enemy has told the church is that the moment you are born again, all your problems were solved. If that was true, there would be no need for prayer sheet. Because the moment you say, Jesus, I receive you into my life, automatically you should just check your bank balance. Check your bank balance, check your BP. Already there must be someone by your door wanting to marry you. Is, is, that, is that true? But how many know it's not so? Okay. And the reason is foundational problems. Where do you come from? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see so many issues in your life. Where do you come from? Hallelujah. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Say foundations. Talk to me, say foundations. What is the foundation? What is the foundation of a building? The load-bearing part of a building. The load-bearing part of a building. What is the foundation? It is the beginning. The beginning, the starting point. The alpha of one's life. So if the alpha is destroyed, there's no omega. If the beginning is already destroyed, nothing you do in the middle will matter. We didn't say you won't do things in the middle, but we are saying nothing you do in the middle will matter. So, KPM, prayer shift, is a place where people come and they say, man of God, I've got this problem, I've got that problem. It is problems that brought you here. Yes, it is problems that could not be solved in your previous church that brought you here. Otherwise, you won't be here. Ah, let's, let's tell the truth. So, KPM is a solution center. Now, watch this. The reason why some come, stay for a while and go, is because they don't understand that when you come to KPM, when you come to prayer shift, we start addressing the issue from a platform of foundation. So, you come, let's use the building as an example, and you say, man of God, the, the win every time we put new windows, the windows are new, they are quality, but they are cracking. And then you change the windows and you put new windows. Then you say, maybe the local windows are weak. You import from South Africa, same thing happens. You import from Germany, same thing happens. The problem is not the windows. The problem is the building. It might not even be the walls. It could be the foundation. Because even if the walls are straight and the foundation is faulty, am I right, Rogers? And the foundation is faulty, the, 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 listen to me, the cracks are going to come into the building. The glass is going to crack. The walls are going to crack. The ceiling is going to fall. Building, you know, Treyama. So, the problem is many people just want you to replace the windows. They want a quick fix. Because the windows, are, they look like the obvious problem, but they are not the real problem. Back to our example. The problem is on the foundation. So, when there's a faulty foundation, it doesn't matter how in love you are with your girlfriend. Even if you get married, you will be divorced. Oh. Look, Bejir. Because if there's a foundation of no marriage from your background... You are building to fall. We need to go back and deal with the foundation. How do you know what's in your foundation? Look at your father. You don't have to look far. People prefer to look at the government than to look at their father. The government is not your foundation. Look at your father. Look at your father. Look at your mother. 
And don't look at them from a platform of being defensive. Many people are too defensive when it comes to foundational issues. They don't even want it talked about. Uh, why are you talking about my mother? Uh, the problem is very it's obvious. They are there. Yes, I got to leave. I got to leave. faulty foundation. <laughs> foundations don't care that you're a pastor. So calling does not veto foundations. Foundations do not care how educated you are. If your foundation is faulty, though you are educated, it will look like you're not educated. <laughs> In other words, back to our building example, it doesn't matter how beautiful the chandeliers are that you put in a building with a faulty foundation, the chandelier will fall and crumble. You put another one, it falls and crumbles because the foundation is faulty. The foundation is faulty. Look at me. How do you know your foundation is faulty? Look at patterns of failure in your life. The patterns tell you the foundation you are dealing with. If your foundation speak, they speak. What you hear is what you see, the consequences. So when you see a pattern of failure, it doesn't matter to Mskana Yeye Akanaka say Waunorora Unutosom Ramba Chete. If the foundation from your background is faulty, if the foundation from her background maritally is faulty, you are destined for divorce. I know you don't want to hear this. Ah, men of God, you are being negative. No, I'm not being negative. We are targeting the real problem in your life. <laughs> Levi and Simeon. Genesis 49. Put it up there. Levi and Simeon. Our brothers, instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling. Levi, the background of Moses. Levi, instruments of cruelty. The cruelty that we saw, that we saw in Levi, we saw in Moses. Moses, the deliverer. Moses, the man of God. He, listen to me. When they, when they messed up with the Ten Commandments, he made them grind them into powder and made them drink the powder. That is cruelty. Moses. Moses did not deal with foundation. So he didn't make you to the promised land. So it doesn't matter what Urundu Finyamira says. As long as you do not deal with foundation in these ember months, you will not make it to the promised land. Though it is prophesied. Hearing a prophecy is not as important as dealing with foundations. Many people go to false prophets' churches and they get prophecies that will never be fulfilled because they are trying to build on a faulty foundation. What is a faulty foundation? It is like building on sand. Jesus comes in the book of Matthew chapter number 7 and he says, listen to me, there are two people who built. One built on sand, one built on a rock and the wind came and the storms came. Listen to me. The storms will expose your foundation. The wind will expose your foundation. The economy will expose your foundation. Witchcraft will expose your foundation. Before the wind came, before the storm came, you could have even bought the house built on sand because they look the same. How do I know a believer who is not standing on a strong foundation? Any small problem shakes them. Foundation is calling you. Foundation is calling you. Where do you come from? Many have ignored evil foundation because of education. Many have ignored evil foundation because of location. They move from Zimbabwe to UK. They move from Zimbabwe to Australia. But the foundation will follow you wherever you go. So you just change location of oppression. That's all you did. Now you are just being oppressed in a foreign country. Foundation. 
foundation. Where, where do you come from? Do not forget the stone from which you were hewn. Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. Let me show you something. <laughs> Read the Bible. Then Joshua charged them at that time saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord. Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this Jericho city or rebuilds Jericho. He shall lay his foundation with his firstborn and with his youngest shall he set up the gates. So Joshua, he released a word in the realm of the spirit and he said the man who rebuilds Jericho after they made an effort for Jericho to collapse, the man who rebuilds Jericho is going to be in serious trouble. That's what Joshua said. Joshua said it. He said it as an authority. There are many people who are building on the foundation of cursed words, curses spoken over your life. You can't build on top of those words. You need to remove those words, pull them down, and then we relay a new foundation. What did Joshua say? The man. It doesn't matter who the man is. Achauya, Oita rebuilds. Jericho. What shall happen? At the foundation of Jericho, Monarchy first born Achav. And when he finishes, as long as that happens, when he finishes Jericho, his last born shall die. Pronounced in the realm of the spirit. Here comes Ahab, first Kings 16, verse 33. And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, God of Israel, to anger. Remember what did I tell you? Ahab mambo, abawaya time time. He provoked the Lord, God of Israel, to anger. Than all the kings of Israel. There are people who come from a background where your forefathers provoked God. It doesn't matter how many mabira ano itwa. It's provoking God. Kudaira koko kunzi mukanya koru gite koko kuto de na mwari. Hey, it's tradition. Hey, answer. So hey, I pro provoke God. Let me see, let's see what happened. Give me the next verse. In his days, Hell of Bethel built Jericho. Joshua said, don't build this thing. Otherwise, there's a problem. So in defiance, <laughs> Heal of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundation with Abiram, Abiram, his firstborn. Now, imagine if you were born as Abiram. And then your father starts to build. Some of you, you come from a background where your father is building what God said don't build. So imagine if you are born into this family and you are the firstborn. And a strange disease comes on you. It doesn't matter how many doctors you go to. You can go to Dr. Masao. You can go to Dr. Rumbi. You can go to Dr. Lino. You can go to specialists. Specialists do not veto foundations. So, this man, by defying God, he killed his child, firstborn. Can you imagine being the wife? And that's like many of you. The problems you're experiencing are strange. You don't understand where they are coming from. I'm here to tell you, they are coming from foundations. You hear a kurva ishtara tiso, kwedu akurorwe. So the problems must be dealt with from a foundational perspective. Huh. Abiram, you are in this service. Your last seven relationships have been spoiled by evil foundations. Now your new boyfriend, now this one, you, you, don't, you don't just love him, you feel heart palpitations. Heart palpitations. When I see him, man of God, my heart goes kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Nonsense. If you don't deal with evil foundations, that same boyfriend, 
Many times, believers, they make bold claims. It happened to others. It will not happen to me in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. What have you done to ensure it does not happen to you? Have you fasted enough? I'm not talking about fasting and breaking at nine in the morning. Have you fasted at the requisite level for your type of foundation? Men of God, I'm a prayer warrior. Have you prayed? Have you prayed at the required level? Listen. He says in his days, Heal of Bethel built Jericho. He defied. He laid his foundation with Abiram, his firstborn, and with his youngest son, Segub. He set up its gates. So it doesn't matter if you're Ab Abiram or Segub. You are destined to die before time. You need to address what killed your older brother, Abiram, or Segub. Which I don't know which group. Listen, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 10, verse number 1, Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune, which they have prescribed. Never mind the ones who said it. We want to deal with the decree. So evil decrees can be made into your foundation. How roar where is an evil decree? It doesn't matter how cute your boo is. It doesn't matter how many pet names you call each other. You can call yourselves baby, sweetie, honey, even Mercedes. You can call yourself BMW. You can call yourself anything. If you do not deal with evil foundations, if you do not deal with the evil decree spoken into the foundation of your marriage life, we need help. Oh, we need help. We have dealt with a lot of things minus foundation. There are people who are perpetually poor. No matter the effort they put. There are people who come from foundations where you have to be looked after by a woman. So it doesn't matter how hard you work as a, as a, as a young man. Still, in the end, you have not dealt with that one. There are people, the Lord told me, they come from cursed foundations. And until the curse is reversed, you will fulfill that word. And we need to deal with the curse in the foundation. Hallelujah. So, faulty foundations make you fight helpers. Can you not see it's your faulty foundation? So, there are characteristics that are birthed from faulty foundations. Moses, Akataza, Kupinda, Promised Land. Ye faulty foundation. It's not, the Lord said to me as we were driving here, He said, It's not recorded in the Bible that Moses ever fasted and prayed about anger. And you know what angry people do? They defend their anger. When you talk about their anger, they get angry that they're talking about their anger. Proud people, they get angry when you're talking about their pride. Because that's the thing that's supposed to destroy them. So they defend it. How do you defend a habit that wants to destroy you? It's coming from 40 founders. Are you Ukraine? Are you Ukraine? And then you spew that attitude onto other people. And for the sake of those destinies, God has to defend those people by dealing with you decisively. There are things I know, this thing from my background, if I don't deal with it, it will destroy me. The Bible says the Amalekites you will contend with all the days of your life. There are some things in your life that you will deal with until Jesus comes. There's what is called demonic sexual edge. Not normal sexual edge. Everyone should have a healthy amount of sex drive. 
But your sexual drive is driving you into a ditch. That is a demonic sexual edge which you need to confront and you need to tell yourself that this is demonic. This is not testosterone. This is demonic. This is not libido. This is demonic. And you fight it and you fast about it and you pray about it and you tell yourself and you're honest with yourself. Many people are not honest with themselves spiritually. Many people. You tell yourself things to make you comfortable. With the weakness you should fight and deal with and confront because it's coming from your background. And the same thing destroyed your father, but you're defending it. The same thing destroyed your mother, you're defending it. You need to be honest with yourself today and say, I come from a background of evil. Be honest with yourself about your destiny. Be, if you're honest with yourself, you will tell yourself you're behind time. When I see someone blaming the government, I say, shame, this one is finished. Government? Government, you know, will be, be unto you if your destiny is determined by an unvoter. Take your destiny into your, your own hands. Isaiah 52 verse 2, he says, deliver yourself. Deliver yourself. Fight for yourself. Fight for your background. You even know that I'm going to go Question. There you come along that generation prayerless, fastingless, sacrificeless. Meanwhile, you come from a background where and you say it doesn't matter. Meanwhile, your life is showing you it matters. If you have ever Asha risen and fallen check your foundation if you've ever been married and then divorced check your foundation you come from a background with gross darkness you want to use the matches I know what I'm facing as an individual even if you don't come for prayer shift, I'll come myself. The fact that why this is an arungu does not mean urumurungu. Chero on a British passport. In a line, you not to where do you come from? On the urungu. Ah, ah, ah. Your name is now Zoe Phillips, but you come from Urungwe. This is even the name. Just the name Urungwe. What grows in a place in terms of trees, in terms of fruits, vegetation, is dependent upon the ground. You will be told that certain things cannot grow in this area. And the Lord said to me, even if you move to UK, your roots are still in Zimbabwe. <laughs> so if you do not deal with the roots in the name of I've gone to another country, We need to rearrange the soil in which you are planted. Yeah. We need to, re to spiritually rearrange where you are rooted. Hmm. There's, a, there's a mountain, I forget the name of the mountain, that was cursed by Joshua. And things do not grow there. There are people who your very foundation was cursed by a witch doctor. Raise your hands. Genesis 49. Auntie Ruben, you are my firstborn. Excellency of dignity. You are my strength. This way. Auntie, unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel. Never mind what he did. The problem came from being mentally unstable. 
there are people who are spiritually unstable, who can put on fire for God. Then the next thing is you're talking against the church. You're unstable. Who can put a serious attitude somewhere? Oh, boy, pick an attitude. You're unstable. You're unstable. You need to fight that spiritual instability. It is that instability that makes you skip church services in Ember months. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. You know, the way the usher spoke to me, I mean, look, <laughs> do you know who I am in society? I know who you are in society. You are a person with evil foundations. That's who you are. And you are unstable as water. They are emotional tithers. You tithe when you feel like. They are emotional prayer warriors. On fire today. Oh, but seven days. What is Z? Why are you unstable? It comes from your background. Reuben was the firstborn. Do you know that Jesus was supposed to come out of the tribe of Reuben? You are supposed to be called Lion of the tribe of Reuben. But even when Jesus came, he disassociated himself with the tribe of Reuben because of instability. How stable are you as a Christian? How consistent are you? If you are unstable, you need deliverance from evil altars in your background. Evil foundation makes you unstable. You see, <laughs> even death does not veto foundation. question. <laughs> was Levi alive when Moses was thrown out of the promised land? Matthew 7. Put up there the scripture. Do me. I want to show you something from Jesus himself. Dealing with faulty foundations. He says, therefore, whoever hears these things, these sayings of mine, and does them, say instructions, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. So if you hear what you are told and you do it, you address faulty foundations. So addressing faulty foundations is an instruction. <laughs> an instruction to us, God. Every instruction repairs foundation. Every instruction repairs foundation. Lift up your hands. Say, Father. In fact, put your hands on your head. Say, Father, remove from my head stubbornness that makes me reject instructions that will help me with my background. Help me, Lord. Remove every argument in my head that stops me from obeying divine instructions. That will deliver me from faulty foundation. Open your mouth and pray. Hold your head. Oh, it's that head that we need to deal with. Look at me. Look at me. Sometimes you hear Munano dancing. Is that true? Is that true? So your foundation, your evil foundation that you need to deal with. You need to get a hold of your head right now and begin to pray and release the blood of Jesus. Go ahead. Fungwa zekusa namata. Fungwa zekusa papa old ya mwari. Fungwa zekusa ita serious na shunza mwari. Fungwa ito ita zekusa na shunza mwari. instructions to fast, arguing with instructions to pray, arguing with altar instructions. Remove it from me because the devil wants to use it to destroy me. So Lord, remove that from my life. 
keep your hands on your head. Say any evil suggestions by the enemy in my mind, I tear them down by the power in the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth. 